Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now, every now and again, I'll see a photo from a cemetery that catches my eye. And most recently, it was this one. A picture of a tombstone that had been broken at some point and had to be mended using some metal straps and tabs. Now, I thought this would be an interesting addition to our already aging cemetery, and so that's what I'm going to build in this week's video. So let's get to it. Longtime viewers know that my preferred foam for tombstones is XPS insulation foam. So I'll be using this 18 by 24 inch piece and can get down to planning my design. I knew I wanted a simple round top like the inspiration photo. So I grabbed this galvanized tub that we had laying around and I used it as a template to create the top arch. Then I could connect my lines with a ruler and we'll trim it to its final shape. My handsaw only got me so far. So I threw some 60 grit sandpaper on my palm sander and smoothed out the cut edge of my tombstone. This 60 grit paper really makes quick time of the foam and is a must if you plan on making a lot of tombstones. Off camera, I typed up a basic epitaph and cut out a stencil using my vinyl cutter. This is my preferred method, but it can also be printed on paper and the letters cut out with a razor blade. Either way will work for this project I just like how much of a time saver the vinyl cutter is. Now there should have been footage of what happened next, but there isn't, so enjoy this dramatic reenactment. I'm able to transfer my stencil by dusting the surface with some spray paint from about 18 to 20 inches away. This prevents the solvents from melting the foam and gives me a nice clean stencil that I can engrave with my rotary tool. And speaking of rotary tools, I'll be using mine with this tombstone engraving attachment that I've found to be really helpful since it creates a wider base for the tool and ensures that all of your letters are the same depth. I'm also using a quarter inch carving bit, since I have plans for this tombstone that don't involve carving delicate letters. The only thing to do now is start carving. Once the epitaph is carved, I'll take a bit of sandpaper to the surface to clean up any edges and then brush off any dust. This is a messy process, so any level of cleaning you can do along the way will be beneficial. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to split this tombstone into pieces. So I grab a marker and draw myself some guidelines, and through the magic of editing, in one overheated camera, I have my three pieces. But to really give them separation, I'm going to use a rasp to break up the edges a bit more. With everything looking a bit more distressed, it's time to glue it all back together. And for that, I'll be using some Gorilla Glue. I'll spray down the glue surfaces with a bit of water before applying the glue. Then I can use some bamboo skewers to hold everything in place while it sets up. I'll also take this opportunity to rough up the outer edge now that everything is in its final position. Once the glue had dried, I wanted to add some more age to the tombstone. So I grabbed my spray bottle of water and wet down the surface before switching over to a propane torch and using it to create some organic texture. The way this works is that the beads of water protect the foam from the flame, and only the dry areas melt when grazed by the torch. The key is to keep the flame moving at all times and don't stay in one place for too long. As you can see here, this piece of foam had a seam in it, so I'll need to fill that before I can paint it. And for that, I'll be using some paintable caulking. I like to run a bead of caulk along the seam and then give it a light spray with water to help spread it around more easily. And then use my fingers to feather the edges out around the seam. Once the seam looks like it's less noticeable, I can set it aside to dry and switch gears to the metal banding portion of this build. I'll be using three millimeter EVA craft foam cut at two inches wide for the outer band. But before I can add it to my tombstone, I'm going to give it a coat of rubberized spray so that the paint has something to bite into. When the spray is dry, I can switch over to a cinnamon colored spray paint 
and give the band a light dusting to help simulate the look of rust. I'll follow this up with an aluminum spray paint to give it a bit more variation. It's really subtle, but I think it makes it look more interesting, even if it's not technically accurate. I'll set the band aside to dry and can start painting my tombstone. And for that I'll be using a bit of flex bond mortar with some gray latex paint at about a 50-50 ratio. This will give me good coverage and some additional texture, plus it'll really help to hide that seam line even further. And after a quick bake in the sun, my tombstone is dry and I can get to applying the fake metal banding and some additional tabs to help complete the look. And for that I'll be using my Surebonder Cosplay Stick hot glue. Now I wouldn't typically use hot glue for this kind of application, but based on how well it did on another project, it's definitely a great solution for this type of work. I'm also going to grab some of these hot glue bolt heads that I made in another video, and we'll apply them to the tabs to give it a more industrial look that helps to sell the idea of the band holding this tombstone together. Now that the assembly's done, I can move on to weathering. In a spray bottle, I've added some dark brown and black acrylic paint to water, and I'm spraying down the entire tombstone trying to encourage drips and runs where I think they'd look most interesting. If you've never used this method, you may want to go light on your first pass and build up to your final look. And when I'm happy with everything, I can leave it out in the sun to dry. With the paint dry, I'll tackle the last part of this paint job, and that's filling in the epitaph. And for that I'll be using the same watered down brown and black paint that was in my spray bottle. That way I know the coloring will look right, Plus the extra water in the paint will help it to flow into the recesses of the letters, which also means I don't have to be as precise with its application. You can basically just drip some of the paint off the tip of your brush into the letters and it will naturally spread out. This really beats doing it with just paint since the textured foam can be a challenge for a thin paintbrush. The last thing I'll do to this tombstone is add a bit of mossy green to accentuate the cracks by alternating between paint and water. This will help to blend the color a bit more since it's pretty bright, but in the dark it'll really look the part. If you wanted to take this a step further, you could glue in some model maker's grass flocking to give your moss a bit more texture, but for me I think this is good enough. One of the things that's always drawn me to making my own tombstones was just how unique and personal you can make them, and this project was a prime example of that. Now hopefully this video has helped to demystify the process, and you'll use some of the things you've learned to bring your own creepy creations to life. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>